So earlier today, Susan saw a video I had posted onto YouTube. It's actually an old video, and I had it uh, not posted for a while, and I put it back up to be public. And what she wanted uh, me to do is go through how to do this uh, in 2.0, where you have this image and you have a button essentially coming out from behind the image like that. And so I'm going to show you first how to do it in 1.0 using some CSS. Then I'm going to show you how to do it in 2.0 using hopefully, and I say hopefully because I haven't built it yet, hopefully the um, just the native element, but I may need to use a little bit of custom CSS in there as well. So what I did over here is I just got a single, I, I have a section with a single column row, and I got two elements in here, an image and a button. This image I have set to like 150 pixels in width. And as I instructed in the very first video over here, if you want to go find that on YouTube, you can, is first thing we need to do is we need to find the column that these two elements are in. Because what we want to do is we want to put them side by each like we have here. And we are going to use a, um, a CSS property known as display with a value of flex. So we're going to use flex. We're also, also known as flex box um, or the flex box model. And by doing that, we can align these two right next to each other. Well, in order to do that, you always have to find what is the parent element of these two items. And on here, you're going to say, oh, well, the parent item is this row. Well, it's not the row. It's actually the column. And it's not even the column. It's the col inner part of the column. But what's nice in 1.0 is you can come up here to our column. And here is our first column. So let's just click on this. And we come down to our hashtag down here. And right here in the CSS, it tells us that this is the call inner. So it does uh, give us exactly what we're looking for. So we're going to copy that. And we're going to X out of here. And then we're going to open up our CSS for this page. And let's just put in a bunch of carriage returns up here at the top. And so we're going to paste this in. And it's got a hashtag. So there's an ID of cow full 132 with the child element then of cow inner. And so then we are going to put in a little bit of something there. And let me do this. Let me shrink this down so we can see what happens on the page. And so as I do this now, we're going to go displaying of flex. And when I do that, you see it threw it over to the left-hand side here, but it also put everything side by side. Now, what it does when it takes it from being um, display of block, normally an element here would say display block. When it turns it to flex, it turns it into a, it's no longer a block level element, is now an inline level element. And so because of that, it takes up all the extra space. If it's a block level element, so if we take this back out here and we turn it back into block level elements, you can see here the orange line goes all the way out to the side on both of these. So it's taking up the entire room it possibly can within its parent element. But when we take this out now, you're going to see, oops, all that width is gone. So it turned it into inline elements, and so then it puts them side by each like that. And then over here on the left-hand side, I pulled up the code that I was working with over here because I have not even tested this yet again today. So let's just put in what I have over here. So I have now justify-content. And so we're going to say we want that to be centered. So brings them out to the center. And something happened here. I put in a colon instead of a semicolon. So there we go. Now it's in place. And then the third one we have down here, it says align items. And we always put in a colon there. And then we turn to say center again. And it will put in a semicolon. And what that does is it center justifies everything, both left and right and top and bottom. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but truthfully, I think I like, let's see here. I think I like it better where it was up here towards the top more. And what we could always do is we could always put in a little bit of top margin on it. We can do top margin. Um, of course, I'd have to do that just on the button element. So we won't put that in. Let's just see how we like it here. 
And then the rest of our stuff here, we said button, we said margin left, and then we had our index of negative one. So let me just pause for one second. Okay, so what I did is I just opened up the button element again right here. We'll open that up. We'll come down to hashtag, and we're going to grab that CSS ID selector for this button. And as you see in our case here, we're just using CSS ID selectors. We're not using any kind of attributes or uh, data elements or data titles or anything like that. So um, we're just going to do that. And then what I say in my other one here, we just say margin left. Uh, let's just start off with minus 20 pixels. And so I moved it over some. It's not over enough. Let's see what we get if we get to 30. And we are going to have to go to 40. So we want to move it over 40 pixels. But now you're seeing that the yellow button is in front of the image. Well, we don't want that. So let's hit return here. And we're going to say in this case here, we're going to say Z index of minus 1. Now, with the Z index, there is no uh, no units on that. It's just minus one or whatever. So all the elements on the page in ClickFunnels are either a Z index of one or zero. I forget which. It's one or the other. It's not both. Uh, so let's just say that that uh, book element right there, the image element on the left-hand side, that is a Z index of one. And so by saying Z index of zero on the button is going to put it behind it. So it's like when you're working in a Word document, you have bring to front, send to back. That's what the Z index does is it says how close should it be to the reader versus how far away from it should be to the reader. And it's really kind of in relative terms to the other stuff. So if the button, so if the image, I should say, is a Z index of one, the button is a Z index of minus one, the button is always going to go behind the image element. Now, as I'm looking at it, I'm looking at that book and I'm like, eh, I really don't like the angle that book is at. So let's see if we can rotate this book a little bit. And I went out and I grabbed the CSS ID selector for this element again, just like I did on the other ones. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to say transform rotate. In this case here, I just have in here 10 degrees. Okay, is that enough? Is that where I want it? Let's see. Do we want it to go to 20 degrees? Eh, that's probably a little bit too far up right now. Let's go back to 10 and maybe we go to 15. That's 150. So we'll take out that 0, 15. So maybe that looks a little bit better. And there are other ways too. We can even rotate it so it's coming a little bit more towards us. So actually, let me pause that and let me see if I can figure out how to do that real quick. And what I found is I'm not able to rotate that to pull it towards us. If you see over here, I now have in, I changed this here. So I have rotate Z. So Z is going to make it spin around in a circle, just like you showed, I showed you before. So the default is always rotate Z. So it's always rotating around in a circle in some way like that. So that's uh, the default. So if you just put in rotate of 15 degrees or rotate Z of 15 degrees, as you see right over here, it's going to give you the same result. But now I'm doing rotate X, which would rotate it towards us and away from us. And as I'm finding here, as I do this, all it's wanting to do is just flip it backwards no matter what I do. It just wants to flip it backwards like that. And even if I try to put in a negative number, it just continues to flip it backwards. It will not flip it forward no matter what I have tried to do. So we will just remove the rotate X here, but this was just kind of bonus stuff anyway. And again, um, how do you find these things out? How do you learn about this stuff? You just go into Google and you type in, in this case here, I typed in CSS transform rotate and it gave me a whole bunch of posts right here. So in fact, I even spelled it wrong. Uh, <laughs> CSS transform rotate Z index and it gives me a bunch of articles right here. Always the best ones, easiest ones to go to to start off with is W3 Schools. That's where your easiest stuff is going to be. So that's what we got here for 1.0. So let me pause for a minute and I will take a look at what we got to do for 2.0. Okay, so here I got it set up in 2.0 and we come over here and we can see we got our section, we got a single column row, and then we got our two elements again. And you can see that they are full width. So they are block level elements at this point because the orange is full width. 
Now in the other, uh, on, on 1.0 here, we had to put in this line right here that said display a flex. Well in 2.0, instead of doing that, we we're actually gonna put in a flex element and then we're gonna take the image and the button and put it inside of that. So what we can do, we're gonna leave this inside of the row because we can. And so we're just gonna say here, add an element. We're gonna click on flex and we're gonna add a flex element right there. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull these other two elements we have down inside of that flex element. And let me see, that should do it right there. Now, what I'm gonna do is just for the sake of being able to see this, I'm gonna put a border around that flex element. So here we got the, again, we got the section, we have a row, we have the flex element, and then we have our two elements here inside of it. So it's basically what we ended up with over here before we applied some of the other stuff to the elements. So we got them here side by each with each other. So now the question becomes is can we do the same thing? So we want to, like we did over here, we did our justify content and then we we're going to do a line item center. Then we found out we really didn't need the line item center because it looked better where it was. So we need to do the same over here. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come into our flex container and we just wanna make sure the settings are correct in here. So in this case here, we want the direction to be row and if you hold your mouse over here, you'll eventually see it show up at the bottom. We want this to be justified center. So if we don't, we do that, it goes way off to the left. And if we do this, it goes way over to the right. So we want this in the center of the page right there. And now how do we want these items aligned? we want them aligned both to the center. So we click that there, and now they are both to the center. But now let's take a look at this element right here and see, does this have any margin at the top? Let's take that margin out, and we'll also do the same with the image, and then, well, they probably both had the same. So I don't know, is that centered up there? I guess so, they're saying it's centered, so I'll believe it, I didn't think it looked like it was centered. So either way, so those are both centered. And here what we wanna do, is the default setting for wrap is no wrap. And for some reason in ClickFunnels, they have it set to wrap. They shouldn't have that there. And then this here, these paddings here, again, remember we are inside the flex container. You can see that up here. And so these settings are for that flex container. And then on the gap, if we do this, we can see it moves them closer together. And because we wanna put the edge of the button behind the image, we will take out that gap just to be able to move them closer to each other. Now for each of the elements, we can come into the element and there's a little bit here about flex as well. And it says, how do we want to align this? And I'm not sure if it's gonna, okay, it does make a difference here. Let's see here. You can see um, as I click on these, it moves them around. And of course we want to leave that in the center where it was. Same thing with this element here. We want it in the center or we can just click here and turn it off because it wasn't needed for us to do this anyway. Anytime you want to clear what's over here on the right, you can just click this here and it will clear everything off. So now we have them next to each other, but we still haven't accomplished totally what we want because we need to move this uh, button element over to the left. Well, the only way we're gonna be able to do that is with some CSS. So what we're gonna do when we're here, we're hovering over the button, we're gonna click on this little code icon right there. We're gonna come down to the bottom and we're just going to, uh, in this blank right down here, we're going to click on generate ID. What that did now is that created the CSS ID selector for us. I guess I don't have to click on update. And we will copy that right there. We'll come over into our code and we'll just put a couple carriage returns there and we'll put this in. Now see what it did is it put a hashtag in front of all the rest of this gobbledygook here. And um, that makes it an ID in CSS. And so all we're gonna do then is put in our curly brackets and now we're going to say here, margin left colon minus 20 pixels and it moved it over to the left, but you also see what it did is it pushed the uh, sign up, it pushed that text over and then made it go to two lines. So let me pause for a second. 
And before I address the text issue in here, there's one other thing we need to address is that um, I just tried to put in Z index of minus one here, just like we did over here with the Z index of minus one. And because this, this is what we're doing here with the button here is exactly what we're doing with um, this right here. So this is the CSS ID selector for that button. And so we moved it over margin left of 20 pixels, but when I put in the Z index of minus one, and I'll just show you that here, Z index of minus one, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't go behind it. And that's because in order to use Z index, you also have to use what is known as positioning. So what we want to do is we want to go back into the settings for this element and we're going to come here to our advanced settings and with 2.0 every element has the position of static which is the default position in CSS 1 every element comes with a uh, with a position of I'm sorry yes a position of relative so I just saved this here let's preview this and let's take a look at the element itself the button itself once we get into the code and so we're going to right click here and we're going to inspect on this uh, button element and give it a second to pull up so here we are that's the wrapper so here's the uh, wait I'm sorry we're in the image so here's okay where do we go here here's the button itself right here so here's the button and if we come down here and we, we look at what our position is, if it shows it here, here it shows a position of relative, okay? In 1.0, everything generically gets a position of relative, whereas in 2.0, everything will be static, which static is actually correct. That is actually the, um, <coughs> excuse me, that is the uh, default. So we, what we want to do here is we want to say we want this to be position of relative. And now in here, we can take out auto and we can put in minus one and it should have sent it to the back. Well, what it did actually is it did send it to the back. Now over here in 1.0, when we sent this to the back, that was okay because the uh, the row, the column, everything, the uh, section, everything in here had no background, no background image, no nothing else. In 2.0 here, it uh, sent it to the point where we can't see it because I suspect there is in this section, let's come in here, there is a background in here. So let's take out this background and still didn't get us anywhere so now let's go we got a section let's go to the row and we got no background there as well and i don't think there should be one here no background but either way what it did is you can still see where the red line is here what it's doing is it's pushing it behind something else and that's not that's why we're not able to see it so what we want to do is we're going to instead of pushing this backwards uh, okay, it's not going to let me get there, so we're going to have to go into here, come down to our button. Let's go to our settings for our button. Come here. We're going to put this back to, let's put this to one. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come into this image here, and we're going to pull this image in front of the button. So we're going to say we want that relative, and then here, we can make this two, and you see how then it brings it in front of it. So we didn't need to actually set the uh, the button here. Uh, I'm, yeah, the button, so we'll do this, and we'll put this back to auto, and it should work for us just to, oops, let's put an A in there. It should work for us just to pull the uh, image forward. And now what I did is I saved it and I took it to the preview page. And you're going to see here, this looks different than what we're looking at here. Here in the editor, it, uh, because there's gonna be a box inside of a box inside of a box. In fact, let's just take a look at this here. Let me inspect this box. So you have the box that has a text in it, it's known as a span right here. And then you have another span outside of that. Then you have the anchor text then you have the button wrapper itself. So you got three, four different layers here. 
And so as that text moved over on the editor, it squished it down because of whatever reason it did it inside the editor. So just be aware of that, that sometimes when you see something in the editor, it doesn't mean that's what it's going to look like on the real page. So we got this all working right now. We had to do a couple things different than we did in 2.0. And of course, once we get to a live page and everything's working, then I can take out the border line around the outside. I just do that a lot of times when I got multiple layers of things, especially when I'm working with flex elements, I like to put a line around it or even colorize the background just so I can see where the different elements are and how they are lining up. So that is how you do this in 1.0, how you have an image lapping over the top of a button. So if you got any questions, just let me know.